Although the Polynesian islands are located in an area of the Pacific that is situated closest to America, it has nevertheless been assumed that these people originally came from the Asiatic fringe, the cradle of the human race. But despite all the research carried out in this area, no solution to the problem has been forthcoming. As the scientific data I'd accumulated had convinced me that Indians from South America had settled in the islands of the Pacific, and bearing in mind the fact that their only seagoing vessels were balsa rafts, I came to the conclusion that these balsa rafts must possess characteristics of which, so far, we were unaware. The only way to test my theory was to build one of these rafts on the basis of the Spanish descriptions, launch it in the sea off the coast of Peru, and find out if wind and current would in fact waft us ashore. On April the 28th, 1947, the pelicans, for the first time for hundreds of years, were startled at the sight of a balsa raft heading for the open sea. We were on our own, afloat on our nine balsa woods. After a month, the Contiki was way out in the ocean. The Humboldt current carried us north almost as far as the equator, after which we struck out straight across the Pacific. Ocean currents accounted for about one third of our actual speed, and the rest was the gift of the trade wind. The elements were driving us relentlessly west at an average rate of 42 and a half nautical miles a day, or about 80 kilometers. Our record for one single 24 hour stretch was 130 kilometers. After being at sea for 93 days, the lookout climbed the mast one morning and announced that he could see land, a low palm-clad South Sea island. We were in fact so close to the shore that natives on the beach caught sight of the Contiki and paddled out in a canoe to welcome us. This meant that we had made contact with our first Polynesians. We realized now that the overriding factor was not distance, but direction. We had drifted automatically a fifth of the way round the globe in a westerly direction. I don't think any of us will ever forget the wonderful feeling of stepping on warm, dry sand and walking on solid ground after spending 101 days on a heaving raft. But the natives were most interested in finding out what sort of boat had managed to land us safe and sound through the breakers on the windward side of the reef. When they waded out and saw the Contiki, they exclaimed that this wasn't a boat, it was a pay pay. Te Chief, who spoke French, explained that pay pay was the name of the sort of vessels described in the ancestral legends. Pei Pei, or Rongo Rongos of this kind, were well known in the past and were used by their distant ancestors for ocean voyages. In company with the natives, we made our way to their island. Here we planted various seedlings that we had brought with us across the ocean, just as their forefathers had done 1,500 years ago. A few weeks later, news of the arrival of the Contiki in French Polynesia had spread from New York to Paris and from Paris to Tahiti, where the governor dispatched a boat to fetch us.